The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Peter Johnson at WheatPeat, realagriculture.com, and we're back for the wrap up at the Fallings Research Farm, and I couldn't be more excited. Amazing data, amazing yield. So you'll recall. We've been here four times before. We started last fall. What were we looking at? We were actually looking at a drill comparison and trying to assess whether some of the new technology, the downforce technology, Cedar Force, or, or different companies, different names, but we had a John Deere drill that was set up with Cedar Force, and that particular drill had a dry fertilizer box, so we did some with MAP and some without. We had a John Deere drill the exact same drill, only a late, an earlier model rather, a little bit older, not maybe in quite as top-notch shape. We had a 10-inch sunflower drill because we wanted to look at row width and you know we all thought that would be <laughs> the bottom of the barrel. And we had the new Borgo drill, brand new into Ontario. It's got that same downforce technology. This was the first plot it ever planted. And so they had a few hiccups along the way trying to make that drill work. But the outcome, we were here in the fall, we looked at emergence, we looked at uniformity, we were here in the spring, looked at how quickly it closed the rows, the disease pressure. There was so much that we learned here. And the outcome, the best wheat crop that they've ever grown on the Fallings Research Farm, right, Joanna? Yeah. We have plots at 100, did you say 149 bushels yeah. per acre? On, oh, you should have made 150. <laughs> so, Joanna, we're going to Cedar Force. Tell me what the results said. So, the results here on Cedar Force were very, very interesting. The yields across the plots were not statistically different, meaning the yields statistically, we had no difference. But numerically the cedar force did have about a three to four bushel advantage over the drill without cedar force so what that tells us is we need to do more research we need to do more locations and see how that plays out there was a few other locations this year that also looked at the different uh, different reps and the different treatments like we did here some of them showed about right in line with our data and others didn't have quite as much the same uh, advantage numerically. So pretty interesting. Yeah, and, and tip, that's typically the researcher's answer, right? I need <laughs> to do more research. And you might say, well, wait a minute, four bushels, how can that not be statistical? But all that says is that there's enough variability and in field scale trials, yep. one location, three replications, by the way, that, that's, that's good. Three re replications, really good. But it was a bit of a stretch to think we'd get statistical difference, unless we got a 10 or a 12 yeah. bushel yield difference, ah, that's, that's sort of unlikely looking at, at the possibilities with that drill technology. But walk me through a little bit, Joanna, because it's not just the yield. What did we see in terms of uniformity? Well, that's just it. We saw with the cedar forest, those wheat plants, every single wheat plant emerged at the same time. We had it tillered nice and even and was even right through the entire growing season. And what was really critical with that came, uh, especially with the row spacing, right? So the row spacing, or uh, the canopy closure rather, when it came to springtime, we saw that canopy close really, really quick, nice and evenly compared to some of the other treatments. Yeah, and so it's really, when we look at yields on these crops, and, and corn shows it the most, but this uniformity, we really think that's a big factor in yields. And did it show up? Yeah, it showed up with three, four, five bushel yield increase, not statistical, but man, you'd have to step back and say, this technology has potential. We need to Absolutely. look at it further, but boy, it might move that bar. It's not gonna move the bar 10%, but it's gonna move the bar a little bit. Particularly, the other interesting thing on the Cedar Force was these conditions were ideal. Would, would you expect yes. to see a difference under ideal conditions? Not not usually, especially when we're planting on September 16th. That's the other factor. We were planting early, beautiful. That day was perfect for planting wheat. We had a nice, beautiful open fall. We didn't even have a tough winter. So that wheat right off the bat, regardless of the drill we use, was off to the races, was well, well developed with tillers, lots of roots going into winter. Beautiful. So we set it up for success just by planting it in good time and utilizing good agronomy. Yeah, and got to 149 bushels per <laughs> acre. Dang it, didn't make 150. So at the end of the day on the cedar forest, I really think it has potential.
potential. Absolutely. It doesn't always end up in additional yield, but this uniformity thing going as we keep pushing those wheat yields higher, I think it's important. Now you Absolutely. mentioned canopy. Yes. So what about row width? Because we would expect big yield differences. Well, that's interesting. We had the, the sunflower drill, 10 inch row width, and we had a slightly lower yield with it, but not what we would have expected. I would have expected it to be quite a bit different, but where I think the, the row and where row spacing comes into play is especially in later planted wheat. And again, this comes back to that canopy closure. We want to be able to capture as much of that solar radiation as quickly as we can from green up to pollination, we want to capture at least 75% of the solar incidence. Well, if wider row spacing, we would expect that our solar capture is much lower compared to the seven and a half inch rows. But this year, again, that wheat was planted early in optimum conditions. Even with that sunflower drill, we had that canopy closure pretty early on. And we, as we know, with canopy closure, that's what makes big yield. Yeah, and abs, as you, when we were here in the spring, and you can see from these pictures, like there's no question the 10 inch row wheat did not canopy as fast. And from a weed control standpoint, yep. that's bad from a, a sunlight interception. But what's really critical with wheat is the grain fill period. And then the 10 inch row wheat canopied before we got to flag leaf stage. So we go through grain fill and it's essentially at the same level of solar interception that the seven and a half inch yep. wheat is. And numerically, I mean, here's really interesting, right? From a statistical standpoint, the best treatment, we're at 138. The 10 inch row wheat, we're at 128. How can that not be difference? It's a 10 bushel difference. Well, guess what? There's enough variability that statistically, there's no difference there. Still, we give the edge to the narrow wheat for sure. And Absolutely. weed control, man, that, that's a big one. We didn't talk much about that, but that open canopy, sunlight on bare dirt, mother nature's gonna grow a weed. That's just all there is to it. And I think we just got lucky this year. We had a cool spring. Those weeds were so late emerging this year that in the 10 inch row, again, the canopy closed before those weed emerged. Again, I think if it was a warmer winter, it would have been a much different story with that from a weed control perspective. Yeah, absolutely. And so the last one, fertilizer. And you know, <laughs> I am the poster child for phosphorus with the wheat seed. Joanna, tell me that we got huge yield increases. So this was another big surprise, but at the same time, not so much. We did not see an advantage to seed place phosphorus at this location. But let's recap. This farm has a history of good crop rotation and lots and lots and lots of dairy manure. So the soil fertility levels through this at this particular field were through the roof. We had high K, high P, we had soil organic matter level of 5%. Five on a sand? On five a sand. Oh my so gosh. So the fertility levels here were through the roof. And so that is probably why we did not, well not probably, that is why we did not see the response we typically see on lower testing soils. But again, we had a good open fall, a mild winter in, uh, in a more stressed situation. Again, we may have seen a different response, but with good fertility, we just don't see the responses yep. that we and, do. And fair yeah, enough, on a do. sand soil with 5% organic matter and a P level through the roof, I'm glad we didn't see phosphorus response yeah. because <laughs> otherwise, We'd, we'd definitely be putting on more phosphorus than we needed. So very cool stuff, Joanna. An awesome, awesome research project. Uh, we, we need to do more of it, there's no question, but wow, 149 bushel per acre wheat. I'm gonna stick to that number. We gotta get you to 150, Joanna, 100%, but very cool stuff. When we look at the Cedar Force technology, it's got some potential. We still have to sort out exactly how, how much potential that is. When we look at row width, yeah, it might not be statistical, but I'm out on 10 inch rows. It's just, yeah. it's not gonna cut the mustard. And I'm gonna keep preaching seed placed phosphorus because not every farm is the Fallings Research Farm. <laughs> Joanna, thank you very much. Thank you. Great project. Peter Johnson at Real Agriculture, grow great wheat. <laughs>